In today's video, I want to show you five ways to adjust and enhance the color of your images in Adobe Lightroom. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. So this is a Lightroom tips, tricks, tutorials kind of video. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, I should say that I do these kind of videos occasionally. Even more occasionally, I do you know, gear related videos. Uh, but most of the time what I do is landscape photography out in the field. Now, if you like that kind of thing, why not hit subscribe before you go and make sure you don't miss any more of the stuff that I put out. If you enjoy this one, of course, as well. So let's get on with the actual topic, which is all to do with enhancing and adjusting colors. And I do almost all of my color work, in fact, pretty much all of my color work in Adobe Lightroom. I don't tend to use Photoshop for color adjustments. Uh, I tend to just use Photoshop for things that require layer masking or you know, manipulation of things within an image that you can't do in Lightroom. And uh, I thought I'd share with you the five different ways that I use, some more than others, to adapt, adjust, and enhance colors in my images. Uh, now, as I said, this is Adobe Lightroom, and uh, I'm sure that other software packages enable you to do very similar kinds of adjustments, but it may well look a bit different to what I'm gonna show you. Uh, and I will also say that I'm basing all of this on shooting in RAW. I'm sure you can make some of these adjustments to JPEG files if you so choose, but you will probably sacrifice some quality in the process. So if you're not already shooting RAW, maybe now is a good time to start. Anyway, let's get cracking. I've got a single image that I'm gonna do all these adjustments on. It's, a, it's a, already a colorful image. But the good thing about that is it means that as I make adjustments to it, even though I'm gonna go over the top on some of these for demonstration purposes, you'll be able to see uh, exactly what it is that I'm doing. Let's uh, get onto the computer, into Lightroom, and uh, start the uh, topic. Okay, so this is the image that I'm gonna be using for demonstration purposes. And uh, it's from my last video. I had a gorgeous morning out at um, a nature reserve called El Hondo, or sometimes called El Fondo. Beautiful morning, really tranquil, and this was the final shot that I did. Now this isn't quite the image that I showed in the video, but this is the almost completely processed image. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is show you, just very quickly, the raw file before I did any processing on it at all. So I'm just gonna hit the backslash key, and you can see now it says up here, before. And the image is pretty dark <laughs> with a, some, you know, some real strong contrasts in there. Um, now I did actually shoot some other shots of this uh, you know, to bracket exposures. This was shot uh, exposing for the highlights. Uh, and I did shoot some more exposed for the midtones and the shadows in case I wanted to exposure merge it. But look at the histogram. The histogram has got only the tiniest bit of clipped shadows there, which isn't a problem, um, and no blown highlights. So I knew when I saw that that I should be able to recover all of the detail I wanted from a single exposure. So now we'll hit backslash again to go back to the uh, partially processed image. Okay, so this is the partially processed image and uh, I'll just very quickly show you what I've done to it. Uh, lens corrections, removed chromatic aberration, enabled the profile corrections. Uh, I went into transform and just clicked auto upright and that just helped to straighten up a few of these uh, verticals here. And then I cropped it just a little bit because I thought it looks a little bit better like that. And then in the basics tab, I've lifted the exposure by just over a stop, about one and a sixth stops. 
I've lifted the shadows and obviously I've done both of those things to get more detail in the dark areas. I've pulled the highlights all the way back to get all of that detail in the sky. Uh, white and black point just to put a little bit of contrast back in and then the vibrance quite a lot and the saturation just a touch and that's all I've done to this image to get to where we are now. And now we're ready to talk about the, the five different ways to adjust and enhance color in Adobe Lightroom. And the first one is white balance. Okay, so white balance sits here in the basics section. And basically you have color temperature and color tint. Color temperature goes blue to yellow and tint goes green to magenta. Now, this is as shot. My camera is always set on, uh, I think it's called direct sunlight, which uh, gives me this nicely balanced 5,500 uh, Kelvin, I assume it is, uh, temperature and a neutral tint. And I always like that as my starting point. And because I'm shooting raw, it doesn't matter what my white balance is set at because all of the information is there for whatever white balance I want to use. So I've got a few options here. Um, first of all, I've got a load of presets. So if I wanted to really warm this image up, is I could use one of the presets and tell Lightroom that this was shot in cloudy conditions. So I click on cloudy, it's made it a lot warmer here. And you can see it's boosted the, uh, the color temperature towards the yellow and put in uh, a little bit of magenta tint. I could also, let's go back, um, I could go even further. I could tell it it was shot in the shade and that's boosted the yellows even more. Left the magenta tint at plus 10. If I wanted to cool it down, I could use one of the artificial light presets like tungsten. And you can see that's made it very, very blue. Of course, I could also use the auto white balance. Now, I don't like auto white balance either in the camera or in Lightroom because it looks at the whole scene and tries to balance it. And that's often not an accurate representation of what you were seeing, particularly at sunrise and sunset and particularly shooting towards the sunrise or sunset. So if I click on auto, for example, you can see how blue that's made it. And that isn't how I remember that scene. The whole scene had a much warmer glow to it. You can also use this little eyedropper here if you want to try to get an accurate white balance. But again, with a scene like this, you have to be careful. Um, you're looking for a neutral area of the image. Um, so if I click on that, you'll see it's going to give me this little dropper. So for example, if I put this in here, this is very definitely not a neutral part of the image. If I come up here, neutral is typically going to be kind of like a 50% grey. Now if I look there at my RGB values, red, green, blue values along the bottom of that uh, picker, I mean red is at 51 green at 50.9, blue at 53.7. That's pretty neutral. So I can click on there and you can see it's just warmed it up a fraction and put a little bit of magenta in. So that's a more accurate way of doing it if you want to try to you know, automate the white balance process. Of course, you don't have to do any of those things you can you know, drag the sliders around to your heart's content. You know, do, yeah, go crazy if you want to. This is going to look horrible because I'm exaggerating things, but you, know, you can make it really warm and, and lots of magenta or really warm and lots of green, you know, or you know, make it really cold with lots of magenta. It's all going to look pretty horrible if you do that, but the option is there if you want to probably much better off um, to be subtle as with all adjustments. So if you're gonna you know, 
warm it up a little bit, dial in a little bit of warmth and a little bit of magenta, or maybe even take the magenta the other way. Yeah. It's not the way I would want to process this particular image, but you could do. The other thing that you can do with white balance, which you can't do with any of the other methods that I'm going to show you in here, is you can apply it locally. So just an example, I'll pick the radial filter and you can see right at the top here, we have a color temperature and a color tint effect. So I could draw a radial filter in and I could and I go crazy if I wanted to. Uh, I wouldn't, but I could, you know, boost the yellows and the magenta a bit just within that radial filter wherever I wanted that effect to sit. You know, maybe there, for example. And you can use uh, that same feature in both the gradient filter and the brush. Now we come on to the second one. Actually, let's just reset this. So I've got a snapshot here, click on that and let's put it back. The second one is calibration. So the calibration uh, is here. I should just say actually that uh, the order of these different adjustments here in uh, Lightroom is, um, this is tailored to my personal taste. So if you've just got Lightroom or your version of Lightroom it might be in a different order to this. But if we look at calibration, we've got here the option to affect the color tint in the shadows area. And we've also got the option to affect the hue and the saturation in the red primary channel, the green primary channel, and the blue primary channel. So what we could do is take the shadows and say, actually, we're gonna make the shadows much more magenta. Again, going crazy no way I'd ever go that far but you could do if you wanted to or make them much more green you could take the red primary and say actually I want my reds to be much redder sort of deeper red and less orange drag that across and you can see what it's done in that background there and you could say then say actually I also want my reds to be really saturated yeah it looks horrible I'm going completely overboard Let's bring them back. But you know, a little bit of hue change and a little bit of saturation change could work. You could also say, actually, I want my greens to be a bit more sort of yellowy green and maybe a little bit less saturated. And I want my blues to be a deeper blue, less aqua and more saturated. Again, it doesn't look particularly nice at the minute, but you could play around with these as much as you wanted to to get the effect that you want okay let's put the image back to my uh, little snapshot that i created which is before i started messing around with it and then we'll move on to the third way of doing this and that is the tone curve let's look at the tone curve if i click on here so this is the traditional tone curve, which is a luminance curve. So it basically it's looking at shades of gray. So looking at dark to light, black to white. And I've got my histogram here. And one of the traditional things to do here is to add contrast to a scene by putting in you know, a bit of an S curve, darkening the shadows a bit, brightening the bright areas a bit, and it just makes the scene more contrasty. In fact, it's such a common thing to do that's even a like a preset in here medium contrast puts in uh, an s curve or you can go strong contrast puts in an even stronger s curve but as well as doing pure luminance changes you can also make adjustments at the red green and blue color levels so if i go into the red you can see here now that i've got red over on the left hand side here and green over here so if i let's say click here somewhere and drag up what it's doing is sticking red in and then if i click 
here and drag down it's putting green in so it's kind of putting red in my darker areas and green in my brighter areas let's just take that out do it the other way around let's put let's bring it down here so that's kind of taking red out of my shadow areas and if i lift it up here it's kind of put it, it's kind of taking greens and the darker blues out of my highlight areas and i can do the same thing with the green channel so i can say actually i want more green in my shadow areas and more magenta and less green in my highlight areas and I can do the same on the blues. So I can say, actually, I want probably more blues in my shadows and I want less blue and more yellow in my highlights. Yes, it looks horrible, but I'm just demonstrating what you can actually do with this. Now, what you'll see here is that I've actually used all three of those and it's kept all of them. So they're all having an effect on this image. Okay, we'll do a quick reset back to my snapshot. And then we'll go on to the fourth way of doing it, which is the HSL sliders or hue, saturation and luminance. Okay, so here they are, HSL. And it says here, hue, saturation and luminance. And what this is doing is actually giving us a lot more divisions to work with. So I've got red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. And I can affect the hue of each of those colors, the saturation and the luminance. So let's start off with the hue. Let's say I want to make, I've got quite a lot of sort of orange here. Let's say I want to make my oranges a bit more red. I can pull them back. And I can make my yellows maybe a bit more orange. Uh, I can make my blue, my aquas a bit more blue, my blues a bit deeper blue. Again, going over the top here. But I can also change the saturation. So I could say, actually, I want my oranges to be much, much more saturated, and my yellows, and my reds. Again, going overboard here. <laughs> I can take some of the saturation out on the greens, maybe saturate the blues and the aquas a bit. Uh, and then in luminance, luminance is affecting the luminance is affecting the brightness of the various colours. So let's say I want to make my oranges, yellows and reds a little bit less bright. But I want to and maybe my blues a bit brighter and my greens a bit darker. That's what it did look like. And that's with the changes that I've made. Again, I'm going a bit over the top here. I wouldn't go this far normally on processing an image, but you can see what you can do with this. Just with uh, some of the others, you can click on a little sample tool here, click on a part of the image and, you know, say drag up and it will adjust the sliders for you if I drag down it will adjust the sliders the other way for the specific tones that you've selected now one thing I'm going to say about the hue saturation and luminance sliders is you need to be careful not to go too far with them um, in fact that's true of any color adjustment uh, subtlety is best I generally have a rule that I'll never push any of these sliders more than about 30 um, because that's when you can start to get unpleasant effects. You maybe start to get highlighting around areas of, uh, not highlighting, uh, haloing around areas of uh, high contrast. So if you're going to use these, you know, subtlety pays, but then subtlety pays in all of these things. I'm going to reset. And we come on to the final one. And the final one is split toning. Now what split toning allows you to do is adjust the hue and saturation of the highlights and the shadows and adjust the balance between the two. So I have a hue slider which goes from red, sort of goes across 
you know, orange, yellow, into the blues, and all the way across. Now, if you hold down the Alt key, that would be the Option key on the PC, and drag and click on that slider, it actually shows you if like the 100% saturation version, so it lets you see the colour that you're going to be putting in. So it goes all the way from really strong red, you can see it goes more orange, yellow, greens, and it goes into the blues, magentas, and basically all the way back pretty much to red again. And you can do the same thing with the hue with the uh, shadows slider. If you hold down the Alt, or Alt key, Option key on a PC, and drag it, you can see the color. So what you can do is, if you want to, you can hold down the, the Alt or Option key, and just sort of find the color that you think you want to add into the highlights. Let everything go, and then just move the saturation across until you kind of get you know, what looks about right. You know, so I could say, actually, I'll have that all the way on the red and, you know, stick in quite a bit of saturation, which is going to make my highlights a lot redder. And then I could do the same thing on the blue, you know, drag it across until I've got a nice blue tone for the shadows and then lift the saturation until I think it looks right. Again, I'm overdoing it in this particular example. This image does not need that level of colour adjustment. So let's put everything back and then I'll show you the other way to do this which is the way that I actually prefer. Next to highlights there's a little box. Click on it. Now along the bottom of this box here we have the uh, the hue and up the sides we have the um, saturation. So if I click here and drag up I'm going to be adding saturation you can see if you watch the saturation there it says now it's 23% uh, and it says zero which is red. If I sort of drag across and go up, watch the hue changing, going more into the oranges and yellows and the saturation going up. Then if I come back down again, watch the saturation go down. So you can kind of you, know, you can move this around to your heart's content in here and just see what kind of an effect it has. And you can do the same thing with the shadows. So drag it around until you get what you want. So I'm going to push this, make this a bit more extreme just for demonstration purposes. So it looks horrible, I know. But you've also got the option now just to uh, play around with the balance between highlights and shadows with the balance slider. So if I drag it this way, you can see what it's doing is giving much more emphasis to the shadows hue. And if I drag it this way, much more emphasis on the highlights hue. So you, again, you can play around with this until you get the effect that you want. Now I did use split toning on the image that I showed, this version of the image that I showed in the last video. Let me just go back to my snapshot, put it back. And if you want to know what I actually did, um, I used split toning and I used red. And I think I'm going for memory. I should have looked it up before I started doing this video, but I think I used something like oh, way too much probably about eight or nine percent, something like that. So if I turn the split toning on and off, so it's, it's on at the moment, off, on, off, on. It's a really, really subtle difference. I see it's probably closer to the red actually. It's a really subtle difference that I've made and Normally, if you've got an image which is quite colourful anyway, it's only a subtle difference that you really want to make. I use split toning a lot when I want to adjust colour. I actually prefer it to using white balance or any of the others. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed that. Maybe found it interesting or useful. If you have, you know the routine. Give it a like, share it on social media, leave me a comment. 
I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my channel. I didn't make a big song and dance about it, but a week or so ago, the channel actually tipped over the 2000 subscriber mark, which is fantastic. And I, I really appreciate everybody that has hit that subscribe button and uh, especially those people who've helped to promote the channel by you know, sharing it and doing all the other bits and pieces that I ask you to do. So thank you very much. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, maybe you can uh, add to my subscriber account right now. Hit subscribe. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. So thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.